All right, y'all, what is going on? This is your man, L. Jamal, coming through with a special edition of Never Out of Bounds. Of course, this is the place where you can say what you want as long as you got the facts. And as the title is telling you, yes, uh, this is uh, going to be discussing the C.J. McCollum trade that occurred last week. I wanted to give my take on it. I wanted to share what I think my thoughts are, you know, just for the trade in general and also what I feel uh, Portland, what direction Portland might be going into in the future or where I believe they should at least. But anyways, like I said, of course, and we all know this now, particularly my NBA fans, CJ was traded last week to the Pelicans uh, for guards Josh Hart, Thomas Sadoransky, and Nikhil Alexander-Walker, as well as D.D. Luzadia. Uh, Luzada, excuse me. Uh, now, New Orleans is also sending a protected first round uh, pick and also two second round picks to Portland. The Blazers will also be including four Forwards Larry Nance Jr. and Tony Snell in the deal as well. Now, first things first, uh, just Thomas Sadoransky and also Alexander Walker were actually traded uh, subsequent, subsequently after uh, this trade. So, again, we ended up just pulling in, I believe, just Josh Hart. And, of course, uh, we get those uh, picks. Now, you know, this is a quote coming from Dame. I think it's an interesting quote. Because it just kind of puts some perspectives into things. And he went on to say, we talked about it over the years, like this being a possibility. We both knew that this point would be coming, but that don't make it no easier to deal with. When I'm seeing CJ to the Pelicans and stuff like that, it's like, damn, ain't no coming back from this. And I, you know what? It didn't surprise me to hear that. To say that, oh, to hear Dame say that we've had these discussions. I I am under the impression though that Dame always thought he would be the one being traded. And to be honest with you, if the situation would have presented itself, if the situation was right, I would have traded Dame as well. And uh, let's get into more about why I get I feel that way. CJ was drafted 10th overall out of Lay, Lay High, I believe, uh, Lee High College out of Pennsylvania. Um, small school, but he really did some damage there. Da- uh, drafted in 2013, and since joining up with Dane, the duo has led Portland to the playoffs in every season. However, Portland has only made the conference finals once in 2019, and of course, we know how that went. And uh, they pretty much had five first-round exits, with the worst being to New Orleans. How ironically, back into 2017 when we got swept. Most recently, we pretty much you know, we got beat 4-2 by the Pelicans last season. And um, for for CJ, he was at one point the league's most improved player in 2016. He's he's currently averaging over 20 points per game, over four rebounds, four assists. And he's just one of five players, including LeBron and James Harden, to average at least 20 points per game in each of the past seven seasons. CJ is 30, and uh, he did end up signing a three-year extension in 2019. And he will be pulling over $30 million uh, over the next few seasons. Now... This is why, you know, again, a lot of people will say, well, why can't Portland sign anybody? Why can't Portland just get somebody to go along with them? I I, I can't see how obtuse you could be to the actual fact of we're playing, we were playing two players, Dame and CJ, well over $100 million each. So over $200 million, almost $300 million to two players in total, and you expect to bring in high priced or a superstar, a high end superstar. That doesn't work that way. Yeah, that's how you end up with get, getting Robert Covington's. I don't. I don't. I mean, again, it, it was. It's a double edged sword. You know, because this is how the team wanted to market itself. This two guard powerhouse. Again, I've talked about it before. It's this strange fascination that we had since missing out on, uh, you know, the the possibility of having Clyde Drexler and Michael Jordan. Oh man, we could have these two potent guards that that can just lead us to the promised land. No, and then we got caught up on that big. We got caught up on the big man phase for so many years, and we kept missing on that. So again, you know, it's just for one. It's a short-sightedness by Portland. 
in in initially by saying yes these two instantly work together let's expand on that and extend them as long as we can and let's just see what happens but we clearly see what that that ceiling was always going to be western conference maybe after six or seven years and you're not going to win it so you know in the beginning i mean this trade could have been pulled off a while back and i'm pretty sure dame and dame, uh, cj had these discussions but I'm pretty sure Dame would have would have saw him being the one being traded first. And just looking at the stats and just and just seeing, you know, like I said, uh, he is just one of McCullum now being one of just five players to score uh, 20 points in each of the past seven seasons. You know who's not included in that list? Dame. He's not as consistent of a scorer. See, the media has got us to just say, oh, Dame this, and he's loyal. And, and, and again, Dame is, Dame is a great powerhouse in certain realms in basketball in terms of scoring and all that. He's a great scorer uh, from three, but he's not Steph Curry. He's not the most accurate. Uh, he has had a track record of not being injured. And, again, you know, his loyalty to P Portland, for what it's worth, has been unquestionable. Yet over the last few years... His play has fallen off. Let's keep that real. And he hasn't he has never been a great defender. And this season, his game fell off a lot in the beginning. Let's be real here. And for what it's worth, CJ has been the consummate guy there. He's been consistent, again, scoring, you know, anything you need from him. And he, for the most part, has wanted to be in Portland. Now it's one thing to tell the media, yes, I'm going to stay here. And yes, I want the I want the team to make all the moves it needs to to make in order for us to be successful. But if you don't show up in the playoff games where it counts, if you if you're not into it, if you're not playing up to your standard, you know. It shows that says I don't want to play either, not just, oh, do I want to not just saying I want to play. You have to show up and play the games with that being said particularly in the Western Conference Finals against the Warriors, against in the last playoff series we had against the, uh, the Nuggets, I just thought that Dane mentally checked out and really wasn't in it for the Blazers. He wasn't putting up the shots he would normally take. And again, uh, in the Western Conference Finals, he was injured. I'll give him that. But even more so in the, in the series against the Nuggets. In that game six where we pretty much just got blown out in the end, we were close. And all it took was him just being the leader that he needed to be to step up and encourage the other guys to play. CJ was trying to do his thing. He just couldn't make any shots. Again, everybody, a lot of people got cold. But see, when you're when you're the guy that says it's Dame time, it's on me, you have to be the guy to step up. That's just what it has to be. You have to do that all the time. And if you can't do that for Portland, then you should go. Go 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 to L.A. where you do, I guess you don't have to be the guy who can share that with LeBron and whatever superstar they, they can bring in. You can share that. But the, the, that was the whole thing. And it's unfortunate, yes, but, but, you know, you accepted the $100 million contract, you and CJ, and it put the team in a bind and to the point where they can't they couldn't have, have afforded anybody else that was high end. That's just the way that it is. You know, it's not like they took pay cuts, and I don't blame them for for not. It's just the way that it is. Uh, but more 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 into about CJ and just why I think he was just such an imp impactful player for this squad, and I really regret seeing him go of the two. Honestly, um, seventh in the league in three pointers made since 2015. You know, and you know he's just been you know one of those guys that's pretty much been a focal a vocal leader for that squad when when dame hasn't shown up um or hasn't really been checked in or clocked in really mentally and um, i think that's important for a team with you know ups and downs and as many young players as we do um i've always said this one of the main things that portland will always you know need or has always needed at least with these two guys uh could have been a, a strong or a prominent small forward or power forward I think they had decent, de uh, you know, youth and death at center uh, to be decent, uh, but they needed a, a strong rim, you know, uh, you know, not a rim protector, you know what I'm saying, but a, a, a wingman, you know, like I said, a, a forward, 
a four or a, you know a three or four. You know, that would have worked for Portland with these two. But it's just, you know, lack of scouting in terms of drafting. Because we got all these, we've had all these different draft picks. And, you know, the guards have worked. We had, we had Anthony Simons. We had Gary Trent come through. Uh, we ended up to get, uh, getting, you know, value in a trade. Some value for Gary Trent. I guess, if you count, you know, Norman Powell, which that trade was questionable in itself. You know, so we've made those the questionable trades, you know, that didn't really need to be made. I don't know why we got Norman Powell, to be honest with you. I don't know why we needed Robert Company. We needed somebody better than him. And if we couldn't get him an uh, active, you know, maybe we draft some, uh, 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 you know, a small forward or a power forward and we build them up, you know, in, in, in our style of basketball. And we, we failed to do those things. And, and it's not like Portland is winning enough or was win, winning enough meaning, meaningful basketball with these guys to entice another star to say, well, let me take a pay cut to just help this team out. This team is, they're, they're trying so hard. Da, da, da. They're not bringing nobody in there. They're, 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 you know, they're barely getting out of the first round. Nobody wants to, to come to that. And, and, and they don't believe in that, I don't think. So, you know, and to be honest with you, you know, with with kind of the way Dan played in the last couple of playoff series, I, I think he's out of it, you know, out of the mentality of really giving it 100% to be in Portland. And that's fine. That's okay. You fall out of love. And, and I don't fault him for that. Again, I'm not mad at Dane for not wanting to play with us anymore. If he if he were to come out and, and ask for it, I'm not mad at it. But it's just, you know, I, I'd rather these players just be more transparent and just say what it is. You ain't got to just keep telling us, I want to be here, I want to be here, and then turn up, then show up, and not show up in, when it counts, and not be a leader when it counts. That's that's what I'm going to say. Uh, with that being said, the, the, the Blazers are trying to focus their, uh, you know, focus their their team on winning around Dane and and all that but I don't know how long he's going to want to be there at this point uh, but with that being said the move uh, with CJ has created 60 million dollars of total offseason money uh, with a 20 20 million dollar exception I don't know what all those things mean but they supposed to be having a little bit more money to work with in free agency long story short the Blazers also would end up trading uh, Norman Powell and Robert Covington to the, to the Clippers for Eric Bledsoe Justice Winslow and Keon Johnson so just trying to mix things up and um, as far as people complain about that and saying, oh, well, we didn't get nothing back for Norman Powell and Robert Covington. We didn't. Who were they? I don't get me wrong. Norman Powell is a decent scorer, but is he somebody you're building your team around? No. Uh, as far as Covington, he's. Come on now. He Stop. This is not 2015. This is not 2016. He's not the same guy. Stop acting like we missed out on something by trading him. Stop it. We lucky we were able to get what we got. We got some depth for what it's worth. Whatever. Come on now. Robert Covington, get out of here. Anyways, as far as what we are getting in terms of the, the players that I know we are holding on to, Josh Hart, uh, he's actually actually have averaging a career high in points this year, thir- over 13. He's also getting four and a half, sorry, over four uh, assists, which is also a career high as well, and also seven, seven over seven rebounds, excuse me. And, uh, you know, so again, a decent shooter. You know, he's been around the league for a while. I don't think he's going to be, I don't know if he's going to be in a long-term, you know, uh, you know, situation. I think at this point, maybe you do start to draft some more people. You start to bring some guys in. Again, it might be wise to, to really make that, that dang trade to just to say, you know, F it, fuck it, and blow it up and start over again. I know it might look ugly for a couple of years, but we weren't really doing nothing that special anyways. And I'm a fan and I'm going to, I'm just going to say it like it is. And I love him to death. And I love, you know, I love my team. We weren't necessarily doing nothing that special to the point where a couple seasons of us trying to get ourselves back together and not having the greatest of season is not going to hurt me. So, you know, it, it is what it is. And this is a quote coming from CJ. I thought it was really from the heart and it made it, it meant a lot to me. You don't spend nine years in a place you know, like this without it having a deep impact on you. I'm not talking about basketball. I'm talking about your soul. And for what it's worth, uh, you know, both guys, though, Dame as well, both have been, a, you know, really embracing of the Portland community. The Portland community embraces them. Uh, as a fan, you like to see that. I don't live in the area uh, at this point in my life, you know, in that state anymore. But uh, even as a fan, I kind of just have, you know, I've always had an affinity for those guys and just those guys, you know, being true to what they do for so many years and, and, and doing what they could to help us despite the situation. 
situation but it you know it's a situation where again it's just it's salary cap you know it's it's and it's what it is i mean uh, we've had some good moments we've had some bad moments but inevitably you know paying upwards of 200 million dollars for two players uh or maybe even three uh if we add everything together it, it, it's not sustainable it's just not um, it, it, it ain't gonna work. Somebody is gonna have to take a pay cut for for things to happen. It always happens. I think uh, when it, when it came down to the Miami Heat, I know at least uh, I think it was uh, Bosch and LeBron may have took pay cuts as well to kind of keep that thing afloat for a couple of years. So there's sacrifices they would have had to have made uh, to make that situation work. And there was and and that didn't happen on their end and on the, on the players end. And you can't fault them for that. They're still who they are. And and on the front end of the of the organization, the Blazers themselves, they didn't really do a good job scouting. Uh, at the at the end of the day, uh, if if you are gonna have to work with these two guys and have those financial limitations, you're gonna have to learn how to scout within that and get and truly get players that are gonna fit, whether they be free agents, whether it be trade players, or you know, of course, in in the in the draft. And the, and the Blazers haven't done that on their end, so they haven't helped out the players either, given the situation. So it's not about two sides being to blame it's just you know two factors into why this situation didn't work out it is unfortunate of course i'm still going to be rocking with this team forever this is just what it is but in my opinion through what i've seen this is just kind of why how everything kind of fell apart all right y'all if you liked what you uh saw and uh want some more uh let me know that by subscribing liking it you know doing all the things you can do and also i got a podcast as well that i'll be sharing the link to if you want to check that out that is on spotify uh if anybody hasn't told y'all yet though i love you guys peace out one love and until the next time i'm out